Well, hello, 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 everyone. May the Lord bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad you could join me this morning, today, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Good morning, good afternoon, good day, good evening. May the Lord bless you today. Once again, let me remind you of the great words of the great Pentecostal pioneer of the 20th century, 20th century uh, R. W. Schambach. Amen. He says, "You ain't got no problem." All you need is faith in God. Amen. And that is what I want to remind you of, that all you need is to have faith in Almighty God. So welcome, welcome. If you can join me on uh, Facebook, on YouTube, on Periscope, may the Lord bless you. Hello, Similux. Uh, hello, Pastor Ken Radcliffe. May the Lord bless you today. And so invite your friends. Please don't forget to share this on your timeline. And as, as your Facebook story, because I believe what we'll be dealing with this week uh, is very, very important. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, dealing with life's issues. Okay, so this week uh, we are going. Important. Amen. So today, I want you please to invite your friends. They need to hear it. You need to hear it. Okay. And um, I talked a little bit about it yesterday in French uh, and in Creole. Uh, but you know, I am more, um, it's easy for me to know the all the biblical words in English. So I'm going to do this, uh, help you today. And I hope this week that we can be of a help to you so we can help people. Praise God. Can you say amen? Good morning, Miss Bonnie. May the Lord bless you. Hope you all had a great weekend. We had a fantastic weekend. So without any uh, delay, let's go into the word today. Hello, Miss Kayla. Glory to God. I want you to listen to this today and invite your friends. It's going to really, really help you today. Okay, if you are ready for the word, and by the way, and uh, we thank you. We thank the Lord for Memorial Weekend. Uh, we remember those who served uh, for us to enjoy our freedom. My son uh, is in is serving in the Air Force, so I'm so thankful for him. And also, I want to say hello to Pastor Steve, who also served uh, in the Air Force. Uh, and so we bless them. We we give, we give God praise uh, for their lives. Amen. All right. So we we must never never forget those who served. Uh, and gave their lives for our freedom. Good afternoon, GD. May the Lord bless you. All right, today I'm going to talk to you about a very, very important subject. And if you have your Bible today, let's open our Bible, please, to the book of Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. And we are going to look at uh, this verse, verse 13. But before we do that, I want to quote a, a verse from you, uh, to you. Uh, in Psalms 34 and verse 5. Jide, your teaching the other day about health and wellness really, really, really helped me. And I'm so thankful for that. I appreciate what you are doing, my brother, my friend. Okay, now, Psalms 34 today, and I want us to look at verse uh, 4 and verse 5. I sought the Lord, and He heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. From all my fears. God is the deliverer from all fears. They looked unto him and were lightened. I love that verse. They looked unto him and were lightened. Now, how do we get light today? We know the Bible tells you that the entrance of his word brings light. The entrance of his word brings light. So, 
for us to look at God to be lightened, the only way we can do that today is to look through his word, okay? And their faces were not ashamed. And their faces were not ashamed. So once you look to God, you get enlightened. The entrance of his word brings light. And the Bible says their faces were not ashamed. I'm praying for you today and this week that every shame that you have ever experienced in your life will be a thing of the past. It will never come back to haunt you again. But you have to look to the face of Almighty God. Good afternoon, Miss Tracy. May the Lord bless you. And so I want us to go to Galatians chapter 3. And if you pay attention today, I know what I'm about to share with you will change your life. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 15, uh, 13. Pastor Vivian, may the Lord bless you. Glory to God, such a great man of God from South Africa. We honor you, sir. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. Everybody knows this verse. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, so, uh, uh, so that the blessing of Abraham can come on the Gentiles. I need you to underline that, okay? Because uh, there are so, much peop so many people that do not understand this verse, okay? Look in your Bible, please. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and verse 14. That is such a powerful verse. We're dealing with life's issues today. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and verse 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. I need you please to underline the word, the curse of the law. Notice what it didn't say. It didn't say Christ has redeemed you from the curses, from the curses of of life. It didn't say that. It says Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Verse 14, so that the blessing of Abraham, everybody say the blessing of Abraham. And once again, did you notice it's, it's one word, blessing. It is singular, not the word blessings. Many times, I don't know why people don't read the Bible properly, and even, you know, ministers, we make the same mistake. We say, Abraham's blessings are mine. It didn't say that. It didn't say that, my brothers and my sisters. It says, the blessing of Abraham. Now, so you need to understand there is the curse of the law and the blessing of Abraham. So we need to define what is the curse of the law and what is the blessing of Abraham. Well, we know exactly what the blessing of Abraham is. The Bible tells you in the book of Romans and chapter 4 and Galatians chapter 3, Abraham believed in God and it was counted to him or credited to him for righteousness. Simple, very simple. The blessing of Abraham is the imputing, the imputing, the imputation or the imputing of righteousness, which is the nature of God. So when the Bible tells you the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow to it. The book of Proverbs, the blessing of the Lord. It's one blessing. And what is that blessing? That is righteousness. To be just to be justified, to be declared righteous. That is the blessing of Abraham. And Abraham did not do anything to receive it. He simply believed. Believe in what? He believed in the work uh, of what Christ would do because he saw the uh, prefigure of it on Mount Moriah. Are you listening? So I want you please to write this down. The blessing of Abraham is the imputing of righteousness. And the word to impute means to be credited. It means to be put into your account. Simply by him believing in God, putting his trust in the work of the cross, Calvary, something was imputed to him, and that was righteousness, the nature of God, deposited into his spirit. Now, so now you know what the blessing of Abraham is. So now what is the curse of the law? Mm -hmm. One curse. One curse. So it's one blessing that triggers all the other blessings. So in other words, it is that blessing of imputed righteousness that triggers and qualifies you to receive all of the blessings of Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 to verse 14. Are you listening? It's one blessing, the blessing of Abraham, that qualifies you, triggers all the other blessings. And it's one curse 
that triggers all the other curses, and it's the curse of the law. What is the curse of the law? Are you listening? What is the curse of the law? It's talking about not the laws, but the law. What was the law? The law was that no man, you don't eat of that fruit, because in the day that you eat of that fruit, you will surely die. Are you listening? And so the curse of the law is if, if now listen to me very carefully, and somebody might want to write this down. If the blessing of Abraham is the imputing of the righteousness of Christ into your life, deposited into your life, the curse of the law is the imputing of the sin nature or the sin that was committed by Adam and is now credited to your account by virtue that you are linked up. All of the human race is linked up to linked up uh, genetically, physically to Adam. So the curse of the law is the imputing of Adam's sin to your account. That is why every man, every woman, every boy, every girl is born a sinner. You're not born a sinner because of what you did. You are born a sinner because of what Adam did. And since he was, he's the physical federal head of the old creation, therefore all men, all girls, all kids, all children born in the earth are born sinners because of the imputing of the sin of Adam. But now Jesus is the federal head of the new creation, and therefore when we are born again, we receive his righteousness. Can you say amen to that? So now this is what I want you to understand. It says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So which part of you was redeemed when you got born again. It is your spirit man that became a new creature. You need to understand that. It is your spirit man that was reborn, recreated, glory to God, regenerated to make you a new creature in Christ. So, now listen to this very carefully. It's a, uh, it is a um, somewhat of a uh, funny illustration, but you'll understand what I'm saying here. If you were black before, or African American before you got born again, after you gave your life to Jesus, you were still African American. Is that correct? If you were blonde and blue eyes before you got born again, the day that you became born again, you didn't change the color of your hair, you didn't change the color of your eyes. If you were bald headed before you were born again, are you listening? After you got born again, you still didn't, you didn't have any hair on your head. You were still bald headed. Are you listening? So it was not the physical uh, nature, the physical flesh that change. It is your spirit man that change. Are you listening to me, somebody? Are you listening to me? So it's important for you to understand this. So when the Bible tells you Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law, you've been redeemed from the penalty of sin. You've been redeemed from the penalty of the sin of Adam. Therefore, that is what qualifies you to take you to heaven today. However, you still have to deal with your soul and you still have to deal with the flesh. And let me show you where many of you are today. Now, I need you all to listen to me very carefully because I'm going to be answering a lot of the questions that you have in your life today. Because some of you don't understand how come I am born again. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I, I, I have been baptized in the Holy Ghost uh, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, but I still have some problems in my life that I can't shake off. I still got some habits in my life. Uh, I, st I still see some evil traits uh, that was taking part in my family life that I cannot seem to shake off. And I'm going to explain to you today how to get rid of all this. Okay? So that's why I need your attention today. And give me a bit of your time. This is Memorial Weekend. We can have some time to listen to God's Word. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm here today to really, really help you today, my brothers and my sisters. Now, if you have your Bible, I'm going to show you here in Mark chapter 5. Mark the 5th chapter. Glory to God. So I want to deal with you today how to deal. I want to talk to you today about how to deal with the curses of life, how to destroy the curses of life. Are you listening? 
You need to understand there is a difference between the curse of the law and the curses of life. And the curses of life comes under the constitution of the curse of the law. Just like all the other blessings, all the other, all the other promises of Abraham comes under the constitution of the blessing of Abraham. Now, I need you to get your friends to listen to this. Those who are sick, those you can see they've been sick or they've been uh, in turmoil for a long, long time. You all need to listen to what I'm saying today, not because of me, but because of the word of the living God. Can you say amen to that? All right, Mark chapter 5, and I'm going to read from verse 24. This is Jesus dealing with Jairus, but on his way to following Jairus to his home, we see something happen here with a woman. Please take the time to listen to this today. And I want you all to listen to me very carefully, especially some of you young people that you see that your life is not on track. I'm going to show you why your life is not on track. Why do you feel that you are behind? Okay. Are you, are you following me so far? All right, my brothers and my sisters, may the Lord love you. I can see some of you right now. Uh, Nalini from uh, uh, London. We love you all. We appreciate from watching from uh, on YouTube. God bless you. Periscope family, may the Lord bless you. All right, Facebook family, please invite this to your friends and share it. And Jesus, verse 24, went with him, that is, uh, Jairus, and much people followed him and thronged him. Now, look at verse 25. Look at verse 25. A certain woman, I want you please to underline that in your Bible. A certain woman which had an issue of blood for 12 years. Now, that is so important. Now, what I want you to write down here, this woman was having an issue of blood for 12 years. I want you please to write this down, ladies. She was having some female issues. Okay, she was having an issue of blood for 12 years. So what I want you to do is write the word, underline the word uh, 12 years. Okay. Verse 24, now I'm going to see, verse 25. Uh, and she had suffered. Uh, okay, now, I want you to write this down. Ladies, uh, Kayla, if you can please write this down for me on the screen, I would really appreciate it. Number one, I want you please to write this down, please, Kayla, if you can write this down. Write down, she, had, she was losing blood. She was, number one, losing blood. Lost blood of blood. So write this down, please. Lost of blood. She was hemorrhaging, okay? Losing blood. Number one, write this down. She was losing blood. She was having, she was experiencing a loss of blood. Now remember this, the Bible tells you the life is in the blood. Is that right? The life is in the blood. So the fact that she was losing blood means she was losing life. But the most important word that I want you to write this word down, she was she was experiencing lost, lost the blood. Number two, the Bible says, uh, and she was sick for 12 years. So the second thing I want you to write is write the word 12 years. And then by the word 12 years, write the word long time to be sick. Now, you know that I'll explain to you that numbers in the Bible have a lot of meanings. Number one is a number for God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. Number two is a number of agreement and partnership. If two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, it shall be done. Number three is a number for Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Peter, James, and, you know, James, Peter, and John, right? These are all important. Uh, spirit, soul, and body. These are Trinity, okay? Number, uh, so number three is Trinity. Number four is the number for foundation. Number five is the number for grace. Number six is the number for man, for man was created on the sixth day. Number seven is the number of perfection. Number eight, the number of new beginning. Number nine, the number of fruitfulness. Number 10, the number of, uh, of, uh, of responsibility. Are you listening? Number 12 is the number of government. So now she was sick for 12 years. So write this down, please. There was a constitution working against her. There was a constitution working against her. Long time to be sick, okay? And the scripture says, now keep on reading with me, please. Look in your Bible. She said, verse 25, the scripture says, uh, verse 26, she now, 
suffered many things. I want you to put number three, write this down, all right? She was suffering a lot, suffering a lot and for a long time, okay? Suffer a lot, all right? And she spent all that she had. Number four, I want you please to write this down. She had spent all that she had. So number one, she was losing blood, experiencing loss. Number two, all right, she was what? What was number two now? Remember now. She was sick for 12 years. Okay, long time to be sick. Number three, she's suffering a lot. She's suffering a lot. Okay, not just physically, but also for a long time. She's suffering a lot for a long time. And number four, let's keep on reading. All right. She spent all that she had. Everything that she ever owned, all her inheritance. She now loses it because she spent all that she had. She's now impoverished. Because she has no money left, everything she ever had, folks, have been spent. Are you listening? All that she got, all the money that she ever had, that she owned to her name, is now gone. Are you listening? Now let's keep on reading. She spent all that she had, and she was nothing bettered. So write this down, please. Number five, her situation did not get any better. Her situation did not get any better, all right? And some of you right now, like the Bible says, uh, you can see you are not in a place where your life is getting better. So number five, you, 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 you have no, your situation is not getting better, okay? Number six, it says, but rather grew worse. So number six, she's in a grow worse situation. So her situation is not ameliorating, but deteriorating. Are you listening? And that's where many of us are today. We're not seeing any improvement. We're seeing our situation getting from bad to worse. Okay? So she's in the, number six, she is in a grow worse situation. Are you listening? It's getting worse by the day. And the Bible says, I want you to notice number seven. When she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind. Number seven, I want you to notice something. She's at the back of the line. She's behind. She is behind. She finds herself behind. And that's where many of you find yourself. Uh, the seven things I'm showing you here, she finds herself behind. Some of you right now may be behind in your a house payment. You may be behind in child payment. You may be behind in your bills. You may be behind. You, fi you find you feel that you're behind in your life schedule, in your career. You, you, you have a sense of being behind everybody. Somebody else is improving in their lives, but you, you have this sense of being behind. Ladies and gentlemen, these seven things that I have shown you here are life's issues that people have to deal with on a daily basis. Are you listening? Number one, I want you please to write this down. And again, we can, you can go back to Kayla's notes there. You can see, number one, she was experiencing a loss of blood. Maybe for you today, it's not a loss of blood, but it's a loss of health. It's a, she was experiencing a loss of blood, a loss of health, a loss of social status, a loss of... Uh, Dignity, are you listening? And some of you right now, that's how you feel. You feel a loss of life, a loss of career, a loss of dignity, a loss of social status, a loss of influence. Are you listening? Number two, it's been there for 12 years, a long time. Some of you right now, you've seen yourself in a place of, uh, of this situation for a long, long time. Number three, you are suffering a lot. You are suffering a lot. Number four, you find yourself in a place of being impoverished. You find yourself in a place of no money. You have nothing to your name, everything that you ever own. Uh, once you pay off one bill, you pay off one debt, you have to pay off another thing come up. 
you 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 pay off the um, you pay off the um, the car and then the car breaks down. You have to get yourself another car. Everything you're spending money left, right, and center. And at any time you get a little money, it goes away. It goes away. She spent all her money on doctors. And some of you right now, that's how you've been bankrupt. You've spent all your money on doctors. Number five, you don't seem to get any better. You're nothing bettered. You're nothing bettered. The Bible says she was nothing bettered. Okay. Number six. Number six. It was growing worse. It was growing worse. And you find yourself that your situation is getting worse. Are you listening to me, somebody? And number seven, you find yourself at the back of the line. Your brothers have prospered, but you seem to be behind your brothers and your sisters. And yet they are not born again. And you are born again. What's going on? You ask yourself, what is going on? Well, I'm going to show you something here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, these seven things I've just showed you here are, um, these are what you would deem the curses of life operating against a person. This is not just happening in the lives of people who are unbelievers. These are happening in the lives of people who claim to be born again, who love the Lord Jesus Christ, fill with the Holy Spirit, speaking in other tongues, but they find these things to be a reality in their lives. Are you listening? And so how do you shake off? Because I'm going to show you later on how this woman got her, her miracle and she broke the curses of life. Are you listening? And I'm sure some of you right now, you're tired to be in a situation for a long time. Some of you seems right now like there's a constitution working against your life. An evil constitution, an evil altar is working against your life. But let me show you something here. I want you to, I'm going to show you three verses that explain today's predicament of a lot of believers today. That's why I said to you, give me some time today and I'm going to try to help you as much as I can. Please share this on your timeline. It will be a blessing to other people. You know, the Bible tells you everything that happened in the Old Testament was for our example. There is something known in biblical uh, interpretation, all right, and it's called typology, okay, typology. And I'm going to show you a type and a shadow, okay, of what happened in the Old Testament that is recurring in the lives of people today, and I'm going to show you how to break it today. Can you give me an amen today? Glory to God. Okay, Exodus chapter 12. Uh, this is so important. And of course, you know that Exodus is a type of God's people being taken away uh, from, the, from hell, from the devil, from the angel of death to go, amen, on their way to the promised land. We are on our way to the promised land, amen. We've been delivered from darkness. We've been delivered from the authority of darkness. All right, now, let's go to the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 51. And you know, the Exodus chapter 12 and verse 51 is talking to us about how God will deliver Israel from the angel of death, amen, deliver all the firstborn and all those in the house by the power of the blood. Come on, lift up your hands and say, thank God for the blood. Come on, lift up your hands, say it again. Thank God for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, but now look at verse 51. The blood was applied and the death angel had no authority, had no power over them. But now look in your Bible, please. Glory be to God. And verse 51. Okay, now let's read. And it came to pass that self same day, that very day that the blood was applied, that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. I want you please to underline that. It came to pass that self-same day. What happened that self-same day? Okay. That self-same day, number one, was the day when the blood was applied. Glory to God. Can you say amen to that? The angel of death uh, had no authority over them. Amen. And they were on their way out. Can you say amen to that? That's exactly what happened to you when you gave your life to Jesus. The angel of death that had sway over Egypt had had power and authority over Egypt had no authority and no power over you because of the blood of the lamb. Can you say amen to that? Glory to God. 
Okay, now, number two, let's go, please, uh, to Exodus chapter 13, verse 21 till verse 22. So, let's go to chapter 13, which is the next chapter, verse 21 till verse 22. It says, uh, And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud uh, to lead them by the way, and by night in a pillar of fire that to give them light to go by day and by night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night, for from before the people. The second thing I want you to write down is that after the blood was applied, is that after the angel of death had no authority over them, they were out of Egypt. But notice something here. They were being led by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, meaning that is being led and following the Holy Spirit. Are you following me? They are now being led, guided, directed by the Holy Spirit, which is symbolic to us uh, uh, of us being filled with the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen to that? So, number one, we can see that the blood was applied. The angel of death had no authority over us. We are out of the way of Egypt. Amen. Out of the world. Glory to God. And we are now being led and filled and being led by the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen to that? Glory to God. So that's the second thing that we see. Now, let's go to chapter, that's chapter 13. No, that's chapter 12, uh, 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 Miss Tracy. That's chapter 13, verse 21 and verse 20, uh, 22. All right, now let's go to chapter 14. Thank you, Miss Tracy, for being helpful. Chapter 14, look at verse 5 and verse 10. And this is the one I want you to get. Now follow the trend, follow the pattern, okay? Exodus chapter 14, please. And now we're going to read from verse 5. Look in your... B-I-B-L-E, glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, and it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled or left, and the heart of Pharaoh and his servant was turned against the people, and they said, what? Why have we done this? Why have we let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him, and he took 600 uh, uh, chosen chariots and the chariots of Egypt and the captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And now look at the next verse. And he pursued. He pursued after the children of Israel. Can you see that? Can you see that? I want you please to underline that in your Bible. Notice this is the third thing that happened. First thing that happened was that Israel was out of Egypt because uh, uh, was out uh, from the power of the death angel. It had no authority over them because of the shed blood. We've gone through that. Number two, they're out of Egypt and they're on their way to the promised land and they're being led by the Holy Spirit. The pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. You would have thought that after the blood, after the leading of the Holy Spirit, that that would be the end of Pharaoh. But the Bible says that Pharaoh felt that he still owned Israel and he came and he came and pursued with his chariot's arm to go pursuing after Israel. And that's exactly what's happening to many of you. That's why many of you don't understand why you're going through because you would have thought by now, I'm born again, I'm washed with the blood, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. Why are these things trying to pull me back? Because Pharaoh felt that he had a right to these people. And some of the things that used to be part of your life in the past feel that they have a right. See, Satan is a legalist. And so he feels that he has a right over your body, over your soul. While he has no right over your spirit, he feels that he can still attack your body. Are you listening? And he wants you back to serve him again. But we will not give him that satisfaction. Come on, lift up your hand and say, I will not give the devil that satisfaction. Glory to God. And just like every 
like Pharaoh and all his chariots and everything drowned in the sea. I pray that whatever has been tracking your life, whatever has been following you and pursuing after you to try to bring you back to bondage, may they drown in the sea. Are you listening? May they drown in the sea. All right. Now, this is what you called the uh, uh, typology. Okay. Now, I'm going to explain some things to you today, if not, if we don't finish it today, because I can see that my time is coming up close, uh, to close, unless if you're not working, then we can just carry on, glory to God today, glory to God. Now, you don't give the devil the satisfaction of drawing you back into bondage. Are you listening? Can I, can I hear an amen, somebody? Now, what I've just shared with you, from that woman with the issue of blood can be better described as the anatomy of a curse operating against the life of somebody. Let me say it again. That's what you call the anatomy of a curse working against the life of somebody. Now, what do I mean by that? You, some of you can see, now I'm not saying to you right now that, you know, if, you, if you're experiencing some of these things, that it's a curse. Some of it is just foolish decisions. But if there are, if this is so prevalent in your life, then you need to know how to break these things. Are you listening? The whole purpose of the blood of Christ and the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit is to reverse every curse that the enemy thinks that he has a right to operate in your life. Are you listening? You are blessed of the Lord. You are not cursed. And that's why you cannot afford to have any traits, any, any um, strings of curse, any strain of curse, any right in your life because your life does not belong to the devil, your life belongs to God. Are you hearing me, somebody? Can you say amen to that? So these seven things are symptomatic of people's... Uh, see, a, a curse is an empowerment to failure. Let me say it again. A curse is an empowerment to failure. So we want to break that out of your life. If, if, you, if you are constantly experiencing lost in your life, lost of blood, loss of money, loss of, uh, uh, of jobs, loss of career. That is not right. If you're suffering a lot, if you're suffering for a long time, 12 years, 12 years is a long time to be uh, sick, to be suffering. Are you listening? Number three, if you, are, if you find yourself in a place of impov impoverishment, you find yourself that you never have enough money. Or the moment you get some money, something else breaks in the house, something else breaks with your children, <coughs> and you have to use that money for other than the plan that you had for it. And you don't see your situation getting any better, but it's getting worse, and you find yourself at the back. That, my friends and my brothers and my sisters, you need to know there's something invisible working against your life. It's in the realm of the invisibility that you need to break it. Come on, say, I will break it. Lift up your hand, say, I will break it. By the authority of the blood, by the authority of the name of Jesus, by the authority of the word, by the authority of the Holy Spirit, and by my confession. Praise the Lord. Can you say amen? Now, let me show you something here, and I want you please to write this down. Let's go to Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24, help me to help you today. Help me to help you today. Proverbs 24. I read this uh, verse, okay? And I thought to myself, Lord have mercy. Uh, Proverbs, what did I say? Proverbs 26, rather, okay? Proverbs 26. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 2. Follow me now. Follow me, my brothers and my sisters. Stay with the word. It's going to change your life. Stay with the word. It's going to change your life. Okay? Look at here. Look at here. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying. Hmm. 
I need you to underline that. A bird that wanders and is swallowed by flying. Circle the word swallow and circle the word flying. So the curse causeless shall not come. So the curse causeless shall not come. What is saying to you here, I want you to write this down, there is always a cause for a curse. There is always a cause for a curse. It is a cause and effect situation. Are you listening? It is a cause and effect situation. But what is interesting, my brothers and my sisters, is to notice how the writer here of the scriptures so brilliantly, so anointedly, if you like, cause, C-A-U-S-E, C-A-U-S-E, okay? But that's also good, Tracy. There's a cause and a course for a curse, okay? That's good, Tracy, that's very good. There is a cause, C-A-U-S-E, a cause. Something had to be tr triggered that, 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 that curse. Then it has a course. A, a, a curse, there has got to be a cause and there has got to be a course. C-O-U-R-S-E. -E. Okay, now, but I was saying to you, the writer of the book of Proverbs here so brilliantly and so anointedly connected the word curse with a bird wandering and with a swallow flying. Hmm. Now, listen to me very carefully here. When a curse is operating in the life or against somebody, it is never by accident. There is always a reason. There is always a cause. Okay? But I want you to write the word, circle the word curse, and then circle the word bird, and then circle the word swallow. And those of you living in England right now, I'm going to use you guys as an example. Of course, we've got swallow here in America. We've got birds, plenty of birds. I love watching birds, especially right now in the summertime in, uh, in Louisville. We've got red cardinals everywhere. They're fantastic. But a swallow, now listen to this very carefully. I used to live in London. Of course, we saw, we saw, a, bunch of, <coughs> saw a bunch of them. When it is winter time, you can go and check this out. Type in, in your dictionary to trace the characteristics of a swallow. When it is winter time, it will leave London, it will leave Southampton, and would fly, it would emigrate, it would fly, migration. And you know where it goes? You would think it would go to France, but no, it doesn't. Do you know where it goes? It flies all the way to Africa. It flies all the way to the Sahara Desert, and many of them fly all the way to South Africa, which is summertime over there. Now understand this, that the flying distance between London and Johannesburg is 9,669 uh, kilometers. In miles, that would be 5,635 miles uh, flying, flying distance. Are you listening? So that little bird, the little swallows, will get together and they will fly all the way to South Africa. Now, during winter time, you don't see the swallow in London. Why? Because they are in South Africa. Now, you, would, you could be tempted to think that, well, now we, we'll, we'll never see swallow again. And guess what happens, though? When the winter is over, and now it's summertime again, and springtime and summertime, guess what? The swallow begins to fly back. It takes the swallow, listen to it very carefully here, Six weeks to fly from London all the way to Johannesburg. And so one could be tempted to think there's no more swallow. Oh, but that's where you're wrong. He's gone out there. He's wandering out there. 
is wandering out there, flies out there, for later on to come back and land where it is meant to land, which is back in London. Are you following me so far, my brothers and my sisters? Now, when I understood that, it opened my eyes. I want you to understand, look, I want to show you two verses in the Bible that, didn't, that I did not understand for years until the Lord opened my eyes. Until the Lord opened my eyes. Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, everybody knows what I'm talking about here. If I'm, if I'm telling you to open your Bible to Deuteronomy 28 and verse 2 and verse 15, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That's talking about the blessings, the blessings and then the curses. But remember, I told you there's a difference between the curse of the law and the curses of life and the blessing of Abraham and the blessings. Now, follow with me. Listen to this now very carefully. Verse 2. And all these blessings, if you obey the voice of God, all these blessings will come on you and overtake you. I was like, overtake me? I didn't understand. When I was a kid, I thought, if blessing is coming by me and overtaking me, how can that be good? Overtaking you if you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Then verse 15 says, but if you, if you, it shall come to pass that if you will not hearken to the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do all these commandments and his statutes, which I command in this day, that all these curses shall come on you and overtake you. When I was a young boy, uh, reading that, I thought to myself, well, seems to me verse 15 is better than verse 14. Verse 2, if curses are, 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 is in hot pursuit on me, after me, right? Let's say I'm driving down the I-75, okay, it's down south, okay, and I'm going from uh, Kentucky all the way to Florida, okay? And I'm on the I-75 oh, I south, rather. I-65 South, okay? And I'm leaving Louisville, going to towards uh, Nashville, towards, you know, uh, <clears throat> Chattanooga, and so forth and so on. Are you listening? And I'm going 70 miles per hour, and I look, and I look behind my rear view mirror, and I can see a curse tracking me, tracking me, going by me, and then zoom by me. Wow, it's gone, overtaking me. I thought, well, that's good. It's not overtaking me. On the other hand, with a, with a logical mind like that, you're thinking to yourself, well, I'm looking at the rear view mirror and I can see blessing tracking me. Then it just comes by me and overtake me. How can that be a blessing? I didn't understand. I didn't understand. When it says it comes on you and overtake you, where does it go? My brothers and my sisters, it goes to the next generation. And that's what we call generational blessing or generational curses. And what happens next is this. I want you please to write this down. And this is what I'm going to show you today and how you can break it with the blood. Break it with the word. Okay? I want, you, I want to give you a threefold definition of what a curse is. Okay? A threefold definition of what a curse is. I hope you've understood that Deuteronomy 28, 2 and 28, 15. Okay? And that's why you, 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 I'm talking to you. If you don't break it, if you don't break it, then your children will have to deal with it. And why should your children deal with it when you can break it? If you're great, the reason why you have to deal with it is because your father didn't deal with it. Are you listening? And you need to understand, you need to break it. You've got the authority, you've got the power, you've got the d dominion to break it. And Satan uses this, this kind of curse to feel that he's got a right in your life, in your body, in your finances. No, sir. No, man. He doesn't have any right. Every Pharaoh, every Egyptian uh, chariot must drown. God said to Moses, See, see the Egyptians today, you will see them again no more. I pray that whatever struck your mother and your father will not strike you. Can you say amen to that? Glory be to God. Okay? 
No generational curses because you are a new creation. You are the one that's going to be a new trendsetter in your family. Glory to God. Can you say amen? All right, now write this down, please. Write this down. You don't see that bird. It's gone away. And you think it's not there. And it gives you a false sense of security. It gives you a false sense of security. And then sometimes it just comes back. No, 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 no. It ain't going to come back no more. Like Ray Charles said, hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more. Amen. Don't you come back no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. Hit the road, curse. Hit the road, cancer. Hit the road, disease. Hit the road, diabetes. You can't come back no more. Can you say amen? All right. Now, write this down, please. A curse, I've already told you now, it's an empowerment to failure. Okay? But write this down somewhere. I'm going to give you a threefold definition, a descriptive definition of what a curse is. Write this down, please. A curse is an invisible missile that is trucking a generation, a family line that will detonate at some point in the future. Did you hear what I said? A curse is an invisible missile that you can't see. It's like the birds swallowing, flying. You can't see it. That acts like a trucking device. Are you listening? To detonate at some point in your life. And that's why you must blow up that missile. Anything trucking you right now negatively must be destroyed. Some of you, that's why you can see some traits in your family. Your great-grandfather died of cancer. Your grandfather died of cancer. Your father died of cancer. And it's in your paternal line. You have to break it. You have to break it. Some of you, it may not be a disease. But in your family, your great-grandfather died an alcoholic. Your grandfather died an alcoholic. Your uh, father or your uh, uh, uncle died of an, as an alcoholic. And now all of a sudden, there's that desire. You don't know why you gave your life to Jesus, but something comes into your life to try to cause you to drink. You've got to break it. And not only must you break it, you must not allow it to go into your family line. Are you listening? Are you listening? No more generational curses. We have to deal with it. Do you remember when Jesus said uh, to the disciple when they could not cast out the devil out of that young boy that the father came looking for his, uh, uh, for deliverance? And he says, I brought my son who's a lunatic. Listen to this now. I brought my son who is a lunatic. Are you listening? But your disciples could not do anything. What did Jesus say? This kind cometh not out, but by what? Prayer and by fasting. The word that I'm looking, I want you to look at is the word, this kind. This kind, K-I-N-D. And the word, this kind, comes from the Greek word, janos, G-E-N-O-S. And the word, janos, means this, uh, genes. Something was in his genes. Are you listening? Not his spiritual genes, but his natural genes. It is a cycle of negativity. Are you listening? That you have to break. That you have to break. I know in the Arachion family, we had to deal with uh, the disease called asthma. My grandfather had asthma. Are you listening? Okay. He eventually died at all age of asthma. I had an uncle who died of an asthma attack. Aunt had died of an asthma attack. And the devil tried to kill my niece with an asthma attack. Are you listening? So we had to stand against it. And we did so by the authority of the word and by the blood of Jesus. So a, 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 a curse is an invisible missile that was launched against you, not necessarily by you, but what your fathers, forefathers may have opened them, themselves to. And it acts like a tracking device. Are you listening? Seeking to detonate at some point in your life. Number two, write this down. A curse is a strategic, it is Satan's 
masterclass. It is Satan's, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Masterpiece. To bring destruction and death in a family line. Let me say it again. A curse is Satan's strategic masterpiece to bring destruction and death in a person's life and in a family line. That's why you see some people today, there's divorce in that family rampant. Anybody who gets married, get divorced. Anybody who gets married, get divorced. And there's, that's why there's some people today are, that are afraid to get married because they know, whoa, you know, I saw this in my grandmother and my father and my mother. And there's a fear. And understand this, behind every curse, there's a demon. Behind every curse, there is a demon. Number three, write this down, a curse is an invisible prison. It's a death trap an invisible death trap that the enemy has set into your family line. And that's why you must destroy it. Now, because my time is easy to, tomorrow, if we have time, or, or Wednesday, more specifically on Wednesday, we will deal how it enters and how do you break it. But I'm going to show you today how this woman break it because I've only got three minutes left. I'm going to show you how to break it. What did the woman with the issue of blood do? What did she do to break it? You know what she did? Remember the Bible? Remember there were seven things working against her, right? Loss of blood, loss of life, loss of finances. Okay, number two, long time to be sick, 12 years. A constitution working against her. Number three, she was suffering a lot. Number four, she spent all that she had. Number five, didn't get any better. Number six, got worse. Number seven, she's, at the, she's behind. So how do you break it today? The scripture says when she heard of Jesus, when she heard of Jesus, number one, you need new information in your life. Number one, you need new information in your life. That's why you got to hear the word. He said his word and his word healed them all. What kind of word are you hearing today? This is why when you will hear us today, every day, we're going to send you a healing word. We're going to send you a word break that will break the curse out of your life. We're going to send you a prosperity word. Glory to God. And Satan will fight you hard. But you're going to make a deliberate decision to hear that word. And the Bible says, uh, she came from the press behind and she said, if I may touch the hem of his garment, the hem of his garment. I want you please to write the word hem of his garment. And I love it. Glory to God. The hem. If I do this, if my shirt was too long. If this is not a long shirt. If my shirt was too long, I will hem it. Or the trousers. You hem it. You hem it. You turn it. You hem it. And when it's hem, it is finished. Are you listening? It is finished. It is perfect. Are you listening? So when the Bible talks to you about the hem of his garment, the hem speaks of the finished work of Jesus of, at Calvary. Are you listening? When he was on the cross, he said, Tetelestai, it is finished. So the way you break the curse, my brothers and sisters, you got to hear the word, but the word that you got to hear is the finished work of the cross. That is the blood has paid it all. The blood is the destroyer of the curse. You got to hear about new creation realities. And you got to understand about the power of the blood. They overcame him, Satan the accuser, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony. Number three. So number two. Kayla, if you can write this down, number two, it's about the hem. It's about the finished work of the cross, the finished work of redemption. Glory to God. And number three, she kept saying, she kept saying, she kept saying, you got to confess the word. You got to keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. Why? Because confession determines possession. Confession determines possession. Confession determines possession. Are you listening? It confirms your possession. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Now, write this down. 
three R's, not reading, writing, and arithmetic, but write this down as I close. You receive Christ into your heart. You got to renew your mind to what you have become and whom you have, who you have become. And number three, you've got to revoke curses. You've got to revoke curses. You've got to revoke curses. You've got to resist curses. You've got to reject curses. I'm saying that whatever killed my grandfather, I'm saying that whatever kill, whatever traits of negativity, whatever cycle of negativity that, are, that was triggered from your grand grandmother, you don't have to be submitted to it. You can break it. You can break the curse. Lift up your hand and say, I break the curse. How? By new information of the word, glory to God. And then by following the work of the cross, believing in the finished work of the cross, Satan, you got no right over my body. And number three, I'm going to confess my possession. And I'm going to revoke every work of the devil. Revoke it. You don't have no right. Satan is a legalist. I pray that every Pharaoh in your life die. Every Pharaoh, Pharaoh, every chariot, that they will not get to your next generation. It will not get to your children. Praise God. Can you say amen? My time is up today, and uh, I will carry on with this, if not tomorrow, on Wednesday, because we got a uh, guest supposedly to come tomorrow. God willing, if not, I'll just do, carry on with this. I'm going to, sh by the end of this week, you will know how to deal with this. I want you to understand, my brothers and my sisters, you can be free from all this nonsense. Free from all this nonsense. Praise the Lord. Please don't forget to share this to your family, to your friends, to your neighbors, on your timeline, on your Facebook. And as you can see, there's a bo bottom bar uh, at, at the, uh, on the screen right now. I need you to become some of my partners. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. And I realized we had some problem yesterday uh, with um, um, uh, Facebook Live because uh, we were doing it uh, not doing it like we would do, do usually on a uh, uh, studio basis. And, uh, but I need you to sow, the word, sow into the work of God. You can give through your cash app, give through PayPal. And Lord knows we need your uh, support to do more of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Remember Jesus and the soldiers who fought for us. That's right. That is correct. That is correct, sir. Um, I said at the beginning, Memorial Day, Memorial Weekend. I remember we thank the Lord for all these great Americans that gave their life for our freedom. I tell you what, I have a high sense of respect, especially as my son is serving in the Air Force. And I know Pastor Steve is in the Air, was in the Air Force as well. And many of you have served your country well. We honor you. We honor you. We love you. We appreciate for what you did for the flag. Our freedom was the price that you had to pay. Freedom is not free. Somebody had to pay the price for freedom. Thank you, Pastor Kent. Again, let me remind you, I want you to become one of my faithful partners. Okay, you can give through multiple currency, praise the Lord, but some of you know, you can go to my website and just sow a seed today and be a blessing to the work of the Lord. Amen. Cash up and PayPal. May the Lord bless you. We love you all. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Blessings be upon you. The curse is broken. In Jesus' name. Amen.